Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti from anthonymorganti.com. Welcome to Mastering On One Photo Raw 2018. In this video, by request, we're going to take a look at the texture filter that's found in the effects module of On One Photo Raw 2018. The texture filter is a super powerful filter, and I think those of you that like to add textures to your image will find that it is very easy to use, and it offers a lot of possibilities. So, to do it, you're in the effects module, and we'll go to Add Filter, and we'll go to Textures. And you could see, as soon as I added the filter, a texture was applied to the image. Now, you could do a lot with this filter. There's a lot to show you. So I'm going to show you everything you could do with the filter. And I'm not really sure what our resultant image will look like when we're done. Hopefully I could make something decent out of it. But as is typical with on one filters going across the top, you have the styles. So you have a number of the more common filters that people use. We have bokeh, grunge. Then we have leak that's a camera leak light leak then we have postcard and then under the drop down there is dozens of more we won't go through all of them but you can see that there's a lot of different textures available typically if you have one you know is under this drop down or maybe one of the other styles that we already talked about you could just quickly click on it and add it to your image if it's not there, you could drill down to it using these drop downs. You have a number of different categories. You have a fabric category, a metal ca category, a monochrome category, natural category. You can see there's clouds there, a paper category, photographic, skins, text, walls, weather. So there's a lot of different categories. So first, let's pick a category. Let's just pick walls. Then below that is the exact texture you want to use that is in the walls category. We have a blue fence, a white brick, a warm brick, a cool concrete, cracked earth, cracked paint, cracked paint 2, cracked paint 3, cracked paint 4, dirty screen, dramatic concrete, dramatic concrete 2, green concrete one and I mean we could just go on with all these there's Tuscany there's a number so we have all these different concretes let's get a warm brick so we're gonna get that one now what mode do you want to use this texture in there is normal mode subtle mode see the difference between the two lighter mode darker mode and replace mode and for this image off the top of my head, let's just try replace mode because I want to demo something else down the line. So we'll do replace mode. And you can see that it's pretty prominent on the image. Now we could go with the opacity slider. If we're all the way to the right, we're basically replacing our image with the brick wall. And if we're all the way to the left, we don't have that brick wall at all. So of course we want somewhere in the middle. And I don't know what's going on to my image here. Look at that get rid of it there we go there's a little kind of bug in the program so okay let's keep it so we could see the lion cub beneath the bricks because we're going to probably have to do something to kind of blend it and make it look a little better so that's opacity we'll come back to that and set that at the end to make it look more uh, appealing then we could make the actual bricks themselves brighter or darker with the brightness slider we could make them more saturated or less saturated and again these sliders now are just affecting the bricks they're not affecting the lion cub image that is beneath the bricks hue you shift you want to shift it towards cooler colors or warmer colors and you could use that now there's a couple different uh, check boxes here we could invert the colors by clicking the invert button so you'll make the you know, dark bricks, a lighter inverted color. Uh, that comes in handy, believe it or not. So there might be some 
textures you use that don't look quite right with the image you're using, but once you invert it, it looks more natural. So you could try that. You could also colorize it. You could make it the exact color you want. As soon as I clicked it, it looks like it defaulted to red. There's two different ways you could colorize it. Um, well, technically three different ways. You could move the slider is one way. So you could just colorize your bricks exactly as you want and to make it to better match your image. Now I'm saying bricks. It's any texture you, you're using. You could colorize that texture to match your image more properly to make it look more uh, appealing. Or you could use the eyedropper. Click on that and you'll sample something. You're actually sampling your image. So something in the lion uh, image here. So I could sample uh, her fur and it will colorize the bricks now to match the fur. And the third way is I could kick on, click on the little color swatch and I'll get a color picker. So I could actually pick, let's say, brown for that. So you could colorize your texture to better match your image. In this case, I am not going to use colorize. And I should add, once you pick the color, you could, uh, this, basically the saturation of the color is the amount slider you could use too. So we won't be using that. So finally at the bottom, we have this transform. You could basically zoom in the bricks, in this case, the texture. So it's, you know, so you could maybe fit it to your image better. You also have some uh, controls down here. We could flip this vertically. Now you probably won't see much, but I flipped it vertically. Or you could flip it horizontally. Or you could reset everything with that reset button right there. Or no, I'm sorry, that's not a reset button. That's a rotate 90 degrees. Resets over here. And this is a rotate 90 degrees. So we could make our bricks go the other way if I wanted them to. But I don't. I want them to go this way. So we've settled on our bricks. And I think I probably want them a little more saturated. I think I like the colors that they already are. But I need to kind of blend this better. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a mask. So I'm going to click on our masking options. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a brush. And I want a relatively big brush. And I want opacity at 100. And I'm going to use the right bracket key to make a really very big brush. Like that. And then I'm going to just click once. Like right over our lion cub's face. Like that. Then what I want to do is get a relatively smaller brush. So I'll use the left bracket key to make a smaller brush. And I want opacity probably closer to 50. And then I'm just going to go around where I initially click. So I'm using 100% opacity in the middle and 51% opacity around the outside of where that first click was. And to take a look at our mask, we'll click on View. And you can see what I did. So the stronger opacity, 100%, right on the lion cub's face. And then I feathered it out from there so to get a better blend. Now I'll come back to the opacity slider. And I could make it either more opaque or kind of blend it in a little more better like that. And I think that is decent. We're going to go back to view mode. I mean, it's not great, but it's it's okay. So then we could come in and fine tune the brightness, saturation. I think the color's okay. So that's how you use textures. And I pretty much covered everything in the filter. There's a lot of textures that come with On One. That's a great advantage. There's so much you could do with On One. I think that really gives it a great advantage. And the textures are one of them. And you could add the textures with the filter and the effects module as we just did. Or you could do it in the layers module. And we're going to be covering some things you could do in the layers module in our upcoming video. So we'll be covering that next. So. Thank you, everyone that watches my videos. I truly do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.